Welcome back. Now, the federal government has, since inauguration, has pursued or has made this statement about fighting corruption, and they've continued to pursue it. Howbeit, in that pursuit of cleaning up the system, which they say is down to the fabrics, Alera is not saying anything right now. <laughs> Habit in the pursuit of cleaning up the system, there have been ups and downs, and there have been many reactions. Some saying it's one sided, others saying mm -hmm. there is no clear strategy in this war against graft. But the question we want to ask today is how strategic is the move of the government in the war against corruption? The president, May 29, promised to clean up corruption in Nigeria's public system when it was sworn in. But even though the war is currently in full swing, the same position, or rather, especially with the investigation into the $2.1 billion arms deal, it's increasingly like that this may not be enough. Is there something extra that should be done or that they're doing? Is there a clear plan? Are we going to have something like, remember Mamsa? Yes. Remember why? Mm -hmm. I want to have things like that come back again because at that time everybody began to align. So, what do we hope to see? Anyway, we have in the studio today the Honorable Minister of Information. He's going and to answer culture. some question and culture. So, if you do have any questions, please tweet at us at Sunrise CTV at Alero underscore Edu or at Neo Taibi or send your mail to sunrise at channels TV dot com. Al Haji Lai Mohammed is in the studio. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. You look quite, you look nice. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> the work is not getting to you. No, it's yet. not getting to him. Well, if it's getting to you, you have to pretend it's not getting to you. Honorable <laughs> <laughs> well, Minister, um, you have, you've got, I'm sure you've heard this question over time and you've had different reactions. But tell us, how would you rate your, the war against corruption? Well, with all sense uh, of humility, I think um, the war against corruption is going very well. I'm going very well because at least people are talking about it. We have been able to raise the discuss beyond abstract to concretizing the effect of corruption on our lives. When about two weeks ago, I addressed a press conference launching the war against corruption. We took a different path. Not only did we tell the world how much was allegedly stolen between a period of time, but we also told Nigerians of the entire world how much we could have achieved if only a fraction of that money, of the, of the stolen loot, was retrieved. And I think this is resonating with the people. Now, you see, in my press conference of, of uh, two weeks ago, I did say that between 2007, sorry, between 2006 and 2013, that 1.34 trillion was allegedly stolen by 55 people. Now, that is not the story. The real story is that if only one third of that loot was to be recovered, it would have provided Nigeria with 635 kilometers of dual carriageway, 36 ultra modern hospitals, 20,000 units of two bedroom flats, to have educated 3,974 students from primary school to tertiary level even at the cost of 25 million per child. In addition, it will have provided us with one in three schools. This is the story. And we didn't arrive at these figures, you know, arbitrarily. We use World Bank costs and estimates. What are those rates, the yes. current rates? Yes, the current or rate. the rates. The current, that to, if, to, even today, this is the current rate. Honorable Minister, um, at the beginning of this program, we did say that these things seem possible because uh, there are gaps that allow people, even who don't have the intention of stealing, to consider it because the gap is there. So, is there anything being done to plug these holes that make this stealing so easy? Yes, you are correct, Anero. 
I think the first thing this government did to plug these holes was the introduction, is the introduction of this treasury single account. See, before now, the law that all revenues accruing to government must be paid into a single account was not really obeyed. People pay lip service to it. With the result that you see some of our revenue generating you know, agencies collecting money and putting them in different you know, bank accounts and probably negotiating for different you know, interest rates, interest rates mm -hmm. with the government not even knowing. Uh, and some of these agencies had as many as 26 accounts all scattered all over the world. But today with the TSA, the government has a broad eye view of exactly what money is being made. And that is, I think, has helped a lot. Two, we must institutionalize the fight against corruption. And that is why we are coming out with this reorientation campaign. It's going to be a much improved version of the war against discipline. Because the best way, uh, the best campaigns are those where you are able to elicit voluntary participation of the citizens. Mm. So we are coming out in a couple of weeks with this massive national orientation campaign, which says, change begins with me. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mohamed, the... To get the support, voluntary support of the citizens, you need to get their trust. Absolutely. And so far, I'm not sure there are many Nigerians out there that trust the government because they'll say if politicians come, politicians go, they're all the same 10 and 10 pence. So what do you think will be done to get the trust of Nigerians? For instance, sorry, this is a double barrel yeah. question. You have 1.34 trillion are stolen by 55 people. You would have, Nigerians would have trusted you more, probably if you put out some names that these are the people and this mm -hmm. is what they stole. Name and shame. So what's going on? No, I don't think um, it's correct to say Nigerians don't trust this government. They may be impatient with us, but clearly when it comes about trust, trust comes about when people preach what they practice. People will trust them. And I think, by and large, this government has been preaching what it practices. Two, like I said, the intention of my press release was not to vilify anybody or to socialize. It's to actually let Nigerians know the cost of corruption to our lives. I don't want any distraction, but believe me, we did not manufacture these names. And I told everybody, anybody who really wants to know these names just needs to be more, you know, inquisitive. I gave enough data for you to know who these people are. I said this happened between 2006 and 2013. I broke it down. I said the number of governors, 15. I said the number of uh, ministers, 5. I said the number of bankers, the number of uh, businessmen the number of even civil servants involved. Mm -hmm. So actually, if uh, any journalist is really, really very creative, if I were him, I would just go straight to the EFCC, or go to the and I would get all the list. But it's not my business, you know, really, as Minister of Information, to start naming. Yeah, it's not about name and shame, really. No, there's no time for that. But we actually, my intention is to let the audience know this is what, you know, corruption is costing us. Let them know that the reason why 40% of our children will never reach the age of five. They die before five because money meant for healthcare services has been pocketed by people. That the reasons why we don't have electricity is that des despite the billions of naira that have been pumped into uh, the power sector, all we reap is darkness. This is the intention. That's, I think, when Nigerians know that this government said it's not in the abstract, it affects their lives, I think they will join in the war against corruption. The, but I don't know if that, how quickly that will go. Let me put this out there. There's, there's someone who's tweeting here, for instance, about a website update in the 2016 budget that's going to cost about 795 million naira. And he says, another one also tweeted, 15 billion naira for vehicles in one ministry alone in the 2016 budget. And he's asking the question, trying to get um, at Ani Okwede. He's saying, 
How do you expect us to trust you if you're going to spend this much when you told us that you're going to cut down on cost of running governance for website up updates? You, you see, when people throw figures at you... First of all, maybe I should ask, is yeah. it true that I something like that... I don't even know. Because when people throw figures out of, you, out of context, you're not in a position to even make it an informed, you know, uh, an informed uh, commentary. commentary. commentary yeah. If, for instance, it's Ministry of Works, I want to spend 15 billion on plants, on uh, vehicles, on water, you can defend that. If it's mine, if it's a uh, solid minerals, you can probably defend it. But if you say it's um, probably one ministry, and I tell you that from at least the Ministry of uh, 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 um, of okay, information let me culture. Add he's tweeted here again. Yeah. So it's website update in the Federal Ministry of Solid Minerals, budget seven ninety five million. I, 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 pr frankly speaking, I think only the Minister of Solid Mineral that d did that budget can explain to you. It might not be why it's costing so much. Why it costing so much? Like, like I, you know, like I said, probably you are starting a new 